had a good week. Um, let me get this. Everybody had a pretty good week? Wonderful, 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 wonderful. You look like you've had a great week. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to open up with prayer real quick. We still got some, okay, oh, there's some more coming in. Um, anybody got any uh, urgent prayer requests, anything you need to mention out real quick? Yep, remember Sister Angela? Sister Skipper? Sister Skipper, love her to death. Love her to death. Remember Sister Skipper. Did y'all get to meet Sister Skipper? Y'all didn't? Sister Skipper came here for years. I can't tell you how many years she came from, but a long time. And they ended up moving to Charleston. And uh, I think to be closer to their children, I believe, because uh, the Skipper, he was getting a little older in age, and so they were uh, a little closer down that way. But she still watches all kind of stuff uh, with our church. And, and so keep her in your prayers. Anybody else? Yeah. Brother Dexter, would you lead us in prayer, sir? this back up. Uh, I wish I didn't have to use this, but it's okay. I want to read from Matthew chapter 22, uh, beginning with verse 1, and for the sake of time, I'll read this. I'm going to go through 14, okay? So, uh, and let's just see where we can get with this, okay? Matthew 22, verse 1, and my subject is a lot of different things. I'd like to word it different ways. Uh, is who I am and my purpose, and I would just put on there, I am who God says I am. Okay? I am who God says I am. All right? Matthew chapter 22 and verse 1, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, Here's a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Okay? It says, Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. That is key. You need to highlight that right there. They, made, they didn't just say, No, to heck with it, whatever. No, it says they made light of it. Okay. I gotta find my place here. And the Bible says, and they went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. In verse six, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both good, bad, and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. 
And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servant, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him in outer, outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of che teeth. And here's our key punch verse right here. For many are called, but few are chosen. Now, I believe the verdict here, or the judgment that the king in this parable, okay, it's a parable, uh, is, is that this man that showed up did exactly what those that didn't show up did. He made light of the wedding. He came unprepared. He made light of it. Well, it's just a, a get-together. I'm just coming to get some free food and get a little bit of wine, and I'm going to hit the road, okay? He made light of it. And so because he made light of it, it was almost as worse making light of what the king said rather than just saying, to heck with it, I'm not going, uh, whatever. But because they made light of it, it made the king wroth. It, 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 it whacked him out He was because they had made light of it here. And then this last scripture, or the last verse says, for many are called, but few are chosen. Was that somebody went, that went through? Was that... There he is. Okay. Uh, that's all right. That's okay. That's okay. We'll bring you up to speed. We in Matthew chapter 22. I just read my text. You all right? Yes, sir. You sure can if you got your offering. And ha as he's doing that, I just want to kind of continue. For many are called, but few are chosen. And it's very profound. And, and I've, I've read this. And I've come up with all different ideas of why this scripture is said the way it's said. Okay, um, and in fact, let me just ask: why, why does, just very quickly, maybe one or two of you, why do you think he said these words? What's the meaning behind it? Many are called, few are chosen. What's that mean? What's that got to do with the wedding? What's that got to do with the parable and the point that Jesus is making? Anybody got a got an opinion or anything you want to throw out? Why do you think he said that? Anything. Many are called, but few are chosen. He's talking about a wedding, but he says many are called, few are chosen. Okay, that's all right. Anybody else? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And, you know, for years, my thinking has been exactly those two things. For, for years right thank you sir thank you there you go that, that's a good word we can use right there and then we'll get into it okay it's available because they can't be chosen upon if they're not there so it's not necessarily God's duty to do the choosing it's, who, it's God's duty to choose whoever has shown up. God has called. What does it say? Many are called. Many. Many. He calls everybody. Come to righteousness. Come to holiness. Come, come, to, come to righteous living. Come, to, come unto me, all who are heavy laden. Right? You got something else? Go ahead. <clears throat> Okay, you could you could even you could even say that.
So let's break it down here. There is, the Bible says here, yes, sir, 22, 1 through 14. Okay, so it was a whole parable. And at the end of it, Mr. Warren, he uses he uh, he says this words here: "For many are called, but few are chosen." Okay, so when we break it down, the parable here: there's a wedding prepared by a king for his son. Invitations were given, and the folks invited in so so many ways kind of brushed it off and made light of it. The Bible says, okay, as though the importance of the wedding had no meaning. Okay, it was made of lesser importance by the hearers. And as the story goes on, one of the folks appear at the wedding, and he didn't come in his wedding attire. And then uh, the, the the king got wroth; he got mad in his in his in his self, and that uh, he calls him out, and 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 he says, "You're going to be cast into outer darkness." Okay. So, um, I've often read this, and 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 I've had different meetings, and I've often gotten. The, the same idea that uh, you know God calls everybody but only chooses those who are special for the big boy and big girl work okay and so but the fact of the matter of this scripture is that Jesus has called each and every one of us to a specific identity in him okay and because sometimes we try to compare identities with others or because we don't meet up to a specific standard that we have precedent or prior knowledge of, we write off the calling of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, I'm, I'll get to somewhere in a minute, okay? And by that, what I mean is we don't disrespect the calling of God by any means like, like uh, just, just intentionally. But what happens is, is because we don't line up with the standard identity of a Christian that's someone you've paid attention to in your life, and therefore that causes us to compare ourselves and begin a checklist of things that we aren't able to do these things and that we don't possess and we ain't got and we ain't got and we can't do, okay? And the tragedy among Christians is that most of us think that we're all called to be just Christians and meet along this generalized level of identity as a Christian. And we mask it by saying that we're just supposed to be Christ-like. Okay? And, and that is correct, but Jesus has called each and every one of us individually to be someone and to have a ministry that no other person throughout every other living generation has been or had. I'll say that again. He has called us to have an individual ministry that no other individual has ever had in the face or the history of human nature, kind, whatever you want to call it, okay? Because there's only one Mina. There's only one Dexter. There's only one Aslan. There's only one Warren. There's only one Miss Nina, Right? And so he has called us to have our individual ministry ourselves and our own identity, okay? So the issue comes where we discredit the calling of God by comparing ourselves to others or adding or taking away from ourselves. We don't intentionally say, well, oh, this is him, all, him, all. We just look around and we, we, we all have a standard of really what we're kind of supposed to be in our heads, Right? And as long as sometimes we can kind of get there, we're, we're, we can be kind of, we, we can be fair, okay? But if we really try and we get to looking around at everybody else and we're not able to meet up to that standard, we make light of our own calling. And that's what their problem was in the Scripture. It's not that they showed up and did all this crazy stuff or didn't show up and said, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm, no, they made light of it. And the one that came wasn't prepared for it because he made light of it. And the one that made light of it was cast into outer darkness. Because we are all called with a higher calling than we are. We're called with a calling from Jesus Christ himself. Okay? So uh, whether it be comparing when we compare or not feeling worthy to be what you feel the Lord is calling you to be or you feel as though you'll never meet up to the standard. But, but listen, there is no standard necessarily for who God has called you to be. Yes, we want to be Christians. Yes, we want to be Christ-like. We want to walk within the Scriptures. But we don't have any precedent necessarily for who the Lord wants us to be or you as an individual because there's not been anyone else walk this earth that's exactly like you. 
there's only one you. There's never been in the face of humanity two of you. Dexter, there's been nobody on this earth. See, you, you think you can find somebody that really looks like you, has got the same hairstyle, the same hair growth, the same skin complexion, maybe the same background from Kentucky, whatever. Maybe they went into the military. You, you look like them, but y'all are two. Y'all are from other sides of the universe compared to Jesus Christ because he made everybody individually as they are. Okay? So, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay? Our calling was defined for us. Okay? I'm kind of working through my... I think my fat fingers hit some keys that didn't make sense. 1 Corinthians 7, 17. I'm going to read this from the Amplified, and I just want you to mark it. You can read it if you want to, but I just want you to listen very intently to what these words say because I've got it in Amplified for a reason. Okay, It says here, Only let each one live the life which the Lord has assigned him and to which God has called him for each person is unique and is accountable for his choices and conduct, let him walk in this way. This is the rule I make in all the churches. This is Paul uh, speaking to the church in Corinth here. So that's why Paul here, it, 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 he said that let each one live the life which the Lord has assigned him. Now don't get whacked down on me because I'm not on this everybody's gypsies for Jesus, okay? Okay. There is a standard. There, there is. We want Christ-like. We want to be a Christian. That's great. And I don't think anybody in here is going to take it and run out here and say, well, I'm going to go out here and, and minister on the golf course every Sunday morning and while I'm drinking a beer and, and we'll just, you know, that's who God called me to be. No, no. Okay, that's why I keep making the, the, the mention that we are supposed to be Christians. There is that standard, yes. But beyond that, into the relationship part, of identity, the maturity part of it. And I believe everybody in here is mature enough to spiritually to be able to understand what I'm saying, okay? So Paul even told uh, the Corinthian church that for as the body being one hath many members making up the one body. So think for a minute that there is nothing in our physical body that is the exact same. Yeah, I know we got two kidneys and I know we got two eyes, but if you put it under not even a microscope, but under the scope of Jesus Christ, there is nothing in your body, nothing, nothing in you spiritually that is the same with somebody else. You are special and unique as an individual. But the tragedy is that all have been called to Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ, but yet because of all of these things we compare, we feel like we don't meet up, we make uh, the, 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 the calling of lesser meaning to ourselves, that the Lord is only allowed to choose a select few that really believe in who Jesus Christ has called them to be. That's why many are called and few are chosen because they made light of the call they made light of the call. And so the Lord's only able to choose who, who is, God's not going to force your hand. He'll call you, but if you don't respond, next. So it's not as though necessarily that God uses folks way more than he does others. And I know that all that stuff, I ain't got time to get into that. But, but we uniquely and individually, God has called us. And if we don't respond, if we make it of light, if we make lesser value of the calling that God has called you to be, in the parable, that man got more punishment than, than, than the rest because he made light of it, okay? So, because he did what? And made light of it. He said he wasn't ready. He didn't come in his wedding garment. But the one that showed up got the bigger punishment because he came making light of it, of the calling of God. So we got to be careful. We, we got to know that I am who God says I am. Yes.
are the hands and feet of the Lord. And he uses his body today, which is the church, to move and work. Okay? Listen to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. We're going to go to 10 too. But you, say that's me, are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. See, we are of a most important and specialty to the Lord. And always remember this, and I know you said this before, and I know it's original, but, but God does not call the qualified. He will always qualify his called. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8. And I know you're still writing, but I'm going to try to move on because I don't want to keep you late, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8. Okay? So we're a peculiar people. We're a chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood. Okay, a holy nation. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. It says here, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling. Here we go. You ready? Not according to to our works or you could put the word ability it might be I don't know 1 Timothy 1 and verse 8 I'm, I might have got the scripture on my fat fingers it's 2 Timothy that's right testimony of our Lord I'm sorry I put the wrong one I apologize that's, that's why we bring our Bibles so you can check me right See, if you'd believe me, you'd have went to somebody and said, Man, the Bible says that uh, he's called us with a holy calling, 1 Timothy. They're going to look at you and say, You ain't been reading your Bible, and they'd have been true, too. Yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Here we go. Let's go back to verse 9. Who has saved us, here we go, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. Here we go. But according, how? To his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus what's it say before the world began Woo. that means that the Lord knew who he wanted you to be for his kingdom and glory before the foundation of the world was created okay he has a destiny for you today. And it's not, don't get caught on just yourself. Yes, we want to know our identity. But just like what Sister Haley said a second ago, that your destiny involves more than just yourself. There's a lot that hangs on that. There's that scripture, and maybe one of you can find it. It's in Isaiah that says about the nail that's, that's, that's put in a sure place and, and that all that hangs on it, the weight of that. There's a lot that hangs on our destiny and a lot that can fall and platter to the ground if, if we really don't get a hold to it, okay? If we make light of it, all right? There you go. Write that down and go read that. So, he has called us according to his own purpose. It's not according to what you feel you're able to do or what you feel like you're, you're well, this is about as far as I could ever go in Jesus Christ or in the spirit or in the church or in whatever you want to call it. He, he has called us according to his own purpose. That means whatever he thinks that you can do, if you allow him to do it, he'll do it. He'll do it. That was uh, chapter 1. Yep, chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, okay? Now, I'm going to throw you another curveball. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 1, verse 24. I'm not going to get up here and tell you a bunch of stuff. Without, I'm going to show you what it says in this scripture. I am who God says I am, and you are who God says you are. Okay? And we'll never get step into our identity until we get that right there, that you are who God says you are. And, and, and if you make light of it, it's on you. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 
and verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. He says, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. In other words, he's saying that not many uh, the world has not considered you to be wise, mighty, or noble. Okay, The world's saying that you're not fit for this. Okay, That's what he's saying there. Don't get lost. Verse 27, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. In other words, the Lord will use everything and anything that he chooses to use no matter what people say about it. Okay? No matter what you say about yourself. Okay? And the next verse lists here the reason. Okay, Here's the reason why the Lord has called you with a calling that no man can take from you. The only person that, you can, that can mess it up is you. Okay, And here's why he has said all these things and why he's chosen you with this calling. Okay, Verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his own presence. Verse 30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption and now he quotes part of Jeremiah 9 and 23 if you want to write that down verse 31 he's fixing to quote that's why he says according it as it is written if you want to write that Jeremiah 9 23 and 24 is what he's quoting here or making reference to okay in verse 31, he says, That according as it is written, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. The whole reason that he has called us with a calling that no man can take is that your calling and your purpose is to do one thing and one thing only, and it's to bring glory back to God. It's to bring glory to his name. It's to bring glory to his kingdom. It, it, it's glory to his throne. Everything that we do, our entire lives, our identity, our thumbprint, everything that we do in our identity that, that's wrapped up in the fibers of it, is its destiny is to bring glory back to its maker. Okay? Man, that was, whew, that was my Sunday punch. All right? And, and, and I, I want to be able to look at you tonight and, and, and tell you and, and give you exactly what your identity is supposed to be. But I can't do that because I'm not God and I'm not you. Okay? And, and yes, I can give you all the tips. I can give you all the things that you can do and, and, and whatever. But at the end of the day, there, there is a foundation that we build on. And it, 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 we, we use the scripture, okay? We, we got the word of God. But identity and the knowledge of who you're supposed to be spiritually can only come spiritually. Okay? So if all you do is sit on a pew and listen and you can quote and recite a lot of scripture and you say some things that are pretty good sometimes, but that's about as far as you go, that's about as far as you'll ever be. Okay? Okay? But the entirety of this series hangs on one word, and it's not identity. It's relationship. Okay? I would love to look at you and, and be able to tell you this is your identity, or you need to walk in this, Brother Mike, or Miss Nina, you're supposed to do this, 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 and not do this, 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 and there's your identity in Jesus Christ. But it don't work like that. It comes through relationship. He has called you as an individual. And if he's called you as an individual, he wants to have a relationship with you as an individual. And through that relationship, you'll be able to know the temperament of the Lord. You, you'll, you'll, you'll know the love of God in a way that he wants to love you, the way that he talks to you, the way that he impresses you, the way that he moves on you, the things that he likes for you to do for him. 
I mean, it's all about relationship here. It's kind of like a marriage that, that you find out what your spouse likes and don't likes. And you find out what you do like and what they like. When you come home, they, they might not want to sit there and have a 25-minute chat about how your day went. You ask my wife, when I get home, I like to have about five, maybe ten minutes where I just sit there and I might get on my phone or I might just sit there and stare at the wall. And I just, I'm, 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 I'm de, uh, whatever you want to call it, I'm decompressing, I'm, I'm trying to flush and purge my mind of everything that happened that day and just try to crank back up on what I've got to do now. I got to take a minute and I got to, okay, that responsibility's done. I can, I can forget about that now. Now I got to get this on and I got to make sure I don't forget about this. I got to do this, this, this. But I need about five or 10 minutes. And she knows that. So when I come in, she's not, oh, how was your day? How was Well, I need you to do this. Oh, don't forget, you got to take out trash. And oh, oh don't forget, uh, uh, we got church tomorrow. And don't forget, we got prayer call Thursday. And, and if you do that to me when I come home, I'm going to do this. And, and my face is going to get red and I'm going to get upset. Because I'm flustered. And you ask my wife, I don't like being flustered. I, as a process, as a method to my madness, and, and it, it's, it's my madness and not yours. So don't tell me how to run. It's, don't tell me how to run my madness because it's not your madness, it's mine. Okay? But I want to be able to tell you uh, your identity, but I can't. It all comes through relationship, walking in relationship with Jesus Christ. It will reveal in you and through you who you're supposed to be for his glory because that's the whole point of everything that's the whole point of the world if you will it's for his glory see the angels were created just to, just to be who they are to worship God that's their job if you will it's in the fiber of their making and being is to worship God and, and he's got warrior angels and he's got praying angels and he's got if you listen to those sermons they've got all these different angels and stuff they list okay He's got all these, different, but he chose man to be able to choose whether, because think about it, if you're created that way, if you're a robot and I program you to love me and to serve me as a servant, okay, and I name you Parisio, all right, and I tell Parisio to give me a cup of coffee every morning and, and, and he does that and, and no strings attached, I come home, everything's done, it's done because he's programmed to be like that. But if I get home, and my precious wife comes up to me and I ain't asked her nothing and she brings me a cup of coffee or she brings me an ice cold glass of sweet tea. Warren, your sippy cup. They bring it to you without you even asking for it. And they say, honey, I love you. I hope you had a great day. I, I, I know you're, you're winding down and decompressing, but I just want you to know I appreciate everything you do for our family and I love you. And if you need something, just holler. That's done out of the fiber of love and willful choice how much more meaning does that have that out of its own self out of its own person it is flowed out of freely and willingly how much more meaning does that have and so how much more meaning does it have when we look at the Lord through relationship and we choose to worship in spite of all the hell we're going through we choose to pray even, even when he didn't answer our prayers and, and, and things went bad What kind of meaning does that grip the Lord with? Oh, identity. Mm. See, one of the biggest problems that we can ever struggle with is that most, uh, most experience uh, with all this identity stuff is that folks try to find their identity in Christ without being in Christ. And we read those scriptures Sunday about being in Christ. And we can't do it if we ain't in Christ. It's just lip service. Remember that scripture where he said, they do honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, right? It's just programming. They've programmed themselves to, oh, I thank you, Lord, and I pray the same way every Sunday, and I, and I, uh, for the last 20 years, I've prayed the same way, and I know the same amount of Scripture, and I'm the same amount of spiritual as I was as a dead frog last year, and, and, and I'm just the same old person, same old steady, and I guess you give you a, give you a C plus for, for consistency, I guess. 
Yeah. Yeah. We, we can bear whatever it is that the Lord makes possible to bear in our lives in our season if we'll be willing to bear it. Does that make sense? If we're willing to bear whatever he can make possible for us to bear, it will bear in its season. Now, you can't get out of season. That's a whole other message right there. You can't, you can't try to go out there and scream at the watermelon patch in the middle of uh, 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 December and fuss and cuss because you ain't got watermelons. But if it's its season and you're willing and you yield to the hand of God, he can make bear in your life whatever he makes possible to bear. And we know his possibilities in him are endless, right? So, uh, the Lord has made, and I'm getting ready to close in a minute, but we'll keep going just a few more minutes. God has made a sacred covenant with us. Y'all know, you've probably heard about, uh, preached before the blood covenant, but he's made a covenant with us all throughout the Old Testament, continual, all the way through the New Testament. All And all a covenant is, if you don't know, okay, because I had to look it up years ago whenever I was studying what a covenant was. All it is is a mutual agreement and promise between Okay, it's just a promise. It's a promise, and a promise is a promise to the Lord, not our promise. And then grace is usually what people holler, but it's a promise. And His promise and covenant with us is that He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. That He'll He'll forgive you of your sins. He'll fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and so on and so on and so on. If you read the Scripture. His promises are from A to Z, from from Alpha to Omega, from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation are His promises. Okay. And so we have to get in covenant with God that we won't leave Him, and that we will love Him, and that we'll worship Him only and not another and that we he will remain to, of utmost importance to us and, and and he will remain priority in our lives but here's the thing about it okay and i love it because you know how, how many's failed god before okay i'm gonna get real i'm gonna get real personal how many's been angry with god before go ahead and make light of it a lie go ahead i don't care i've been angry at god before yeah Okay? And so when we get in covenant with, with God, we're supposed to be able to keep that promise that I, I'm going to love you, I'm never going to leave you, I'm never going to walk away. But how many of us have walked away from him before in anger? I'm not going to do it anymore. I give up. I'm going to go get an honest job. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've thought that. I ain't been pastor in a year. <laughs> I've probably thought that a couple times. But all through my, out my years, I, I've thought stuff like that. But the coolest and, and, and most awesome thing about the covenant with the Lord is that even when we mess up and, and we do get angry with the Lord and we do forsake Him and our priorities do get out of whack, our restoration and forgiveness is included in the covenant already. That's the coolest thing about the covenant, having a covenant with the Lord and getting in covenant with him is that even in the covenant with him is included our, fa our failures, our faults, our mistakes, our willful decisions that are dumb. Walking away from God, making dumb decisions and all kinds of crazy stuff, and I'll show you why. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, he says, let us hold fast our profession. And he says, fix and explain why you need to hold fast your profession, okay? Don't feel like every time you mess up that you've just got to get rid of it because you can't uphold the law. See, his, his mercy and his grace is higher than that. He's created a way in his covenant that way you can be in covenant with God because inside of his covenant is all your mistakes anyway they're all covered and he explains this why he says let us hold fast our profession why for we have not 
a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need that is included in the covenant of the Lord is that even when we do walk away grace can step in and it'll give us a little bit of time to get it back right okay grace is not a license for us to go crazy but it is a, I've heard it used this way before that it's, it's almost a period of time that the Lord holds back his judgment for us to get right it's like boys they're going through a, a low blow right now just give them a little time they've got my word they've got people in their lives and I'm going to send I'm going to give time and hopefully I can get a hold to, 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 to Jerry over here that he can go minister to him if he's been praying and acting right and then we'll try to get old, old uh, 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 Carl back in line right here okay my grace is on him right now don't touch him and when the Lord says don't touch him ain't nothing can touch him the death angel can't touch him his own angels can't touch him doesn't matter what he does he, he, can, he can curse God and die for all if he, he, his desire wants to be. But the Lord says, whoop, huh, no, no, he's just going through a spell. My grace is on him. Let's, let's see if I can go move on, on Jerry over here. That's why it's important for us to be, because it's not all about us. The Lord can use us. See, the Lord can use us without us even knowing it. We try to, we get whacked out sometimes because we're thinking, okay, got to make sure I let the Lord use me today, okay? Spiritual, prayerful, scriptures, tracks, church cards. I got to make sure I'm used. But 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 sometimes just just being willful to the Lord. The Lord can use you. I I, I don't I'm not boasting at, at all because I I I used to struggle in this area. But I, I would talk to people and I, I would I would come into contact with somebody maybe going through something I didn't know at the time and I'd get in the car and be like, "Wow, I feel like the Lord just used me to maybe speak some encouragement to this person. I don't know. And I didn't even know it at the time, but God just used me. And where was it for? It was for his. That is our identity, is that everything we do is returned back to his throne because it's for his glory. That's why we live. That's why we breathe is to return back to him what is already his. And what kind of meaning does it have when we give it back to him willfully? That his glory didn't come back because the angels are designed and programmed to, but his glory was was shouted back. It was pushed back into the heavens by a willful being. What kind of meaning does that have when the Lord says, oh, there's my glory back to me from, from, from my own? We, we're, we're living for way more than just what we're living for for right now or what we think we're living for. And I want you to say it with me. I am who God says I am. I am who God says I am. All right? And if I make light of that, you can figure out what your identity is in that area as you walk it. I'm not going to figure it out with you. Yeah, yeah, you can just take it from the Scripture, okay? But I, I don't want nothing to do with that, okay? I don't want to make light of it, okay? I think the Lord gets aggravated a little bit, okay, when we make light of things because sometimes we don't realize what we do have because we haven't taken the time to really obtain the knowledge and understanding of what we do have. And so when we throw off on it a little bit, yes, his grace is there. Yes, his grace is there, okay? But, but I think sometimes when we ought to know better and we've had plenty of time to get there, but yet we're the same old person, we're the same old relationship's not there. We're just doing the base standard of being Christ-like. I got to be a Christian. Hail to King Jesus and let's go to the, let's go to the boat landing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just using that as an example, okay? We, we got to get in relationship with that. Listen to, uh, I got to hurry. Listen to Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. I think everybody should be able to quote this. This is our model, if you will, if you want to call it that, okay? 
I hear you over there. At least he's not crying. At least he's not crying. Thank you, Jesus. I better hurry, though. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. There's your relationship. And it's not just I love you. When you look up that word and you look up the meaning behind that word in the scripture, it's all relationship based. It's action back to God. It's bringing by willful choice and decision glory to back to him it's not just I honor you with my lips but my heart's over here and my intentions is way back there okay that love God and to them who are called according to who's not what I think I ought to be or not what I think I'm capable of being but according to his purpose verse 29 for whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among, here we go, what's it say? Many brethren. Mm. Many are called. Few are chosen. You know, even Jesus said that, uh, he said it in John, and y'all, you can find it, John, uh, the works that I do, shall you do and greater works than these shall you do didn't he say that have we read that in the scripture so we'll do greater works than Jesus Christ did on earth can you fathom that a little bit that's, that's hard to fathom right there isn't it but it's not according to our own works or according to our own purpose it's according to his purpose and if we'll allow him to do anything and everything that he can make possible I mean it's, it's as far as the, the eye could see it's beyond the sky that you could see it's beyond, it's beyond the moon and the stars and the planets and the solar system and the universe it, it, it's it's, it's In other words, the people he reached will reach greater if, if we're allowing him to be. All Jesus did going around as, a, as an example to us was just willing to do what the, the Lord told him to do. What was already in himself. He returned, the glory came down, and what he did? He sent the glory right back up because it's all for his glory, right? So... It, it, it's when we allow the Lord to grasp in his hands our very personality, if you will, in life. He can do with it and use it in a way that will bring glory back to him. It's not necessarily changing yourself into a totally different person. Don't get me wrong and don't, don't make a doctrine off what I'm saying, okay? But, but, but the part of you that forms you into you, the tenacity you have, the passions you have, the Lord doesn't get rid of those things and just replace it. Okay, But when he's allowed to harness those things, and instead of our tenacity being used to just go after money and build our own kingdom or, or whatever you want to label it as, he uses it to build his kingdom. That same frame, that same thing that he created, the passion you may have once had for a hobby or the passion you have in life that when I do this, I'm going to do it this way, and I'm going to do it right, bless God. He will use that same passion and, and direct it in, into his glory if you allow him to, right? So he uses us. So it's not necessarily that we're new creatures and that we're a totally different person. We're not, we're, our personality is gone. We got, no, 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 no. God uses what he's created you to be because he created you for a specific purpose the way you are. The desires you have, God put those there. Everything that's in you that he has, he has set just like this, 
Now, sometimes we can take it and we can get a little wild with it. We can, we can harness it and we kind of go way out here a little farther than what we're supposed to do and we can start dabbling into sin with desire. But, but, but he didn't do that, but he put those things there that led into those things, the, the root of it, if you want to call it like that. And, and he doesn't just get rid of those things, but he uses those things to bring glory back to him. And uh, here we go. We'll, uh, last scripture, then we'll get ready to go, okay? We got five minutes, and, and, and I'm hoping to close before that. Somebody get Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. And I want somebody else to read it. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. Okay? Now, I may stop you, so just, 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 just ride, ride through. Yes, sir. Whoa. All right, I like that. I like that because we'll explain that in just a minute, okay? Because how in the world can you be complete yet we're so incomplete, okay? Keep going. He's the head of everything, right? And it says we're complete in who? In him, not outside of him, not around him, not just talking about him, but we're complete in him him when you look up that word complete it doesn't mean complete like you're thinking like 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 I'm all put together that word means filled and or furnished so what he's saying is in him we are provided by him in us everything that we need to walk in the identity as we walk in it it's gradual it's relational it grows as you use it it's almost like when you practice, you get stronger the more you work out. You get better at it the more you practice. You get better at it the more you do it. It's, it's relational. You're not going to get married the first day and know everything about your wife. I can attest to that. We've come a long way in six years, but I, I, know, I know a whole lot more right now on what buttons not to push, especially, and what buttons to push that I didn't know when we first got married. Because when you first got married, how many guys, when, when you got married to ladies, when it, that you had them, especially the old men, to come up to you and say, boy, you got a long ways to go, and they walk in like this? <laughs> and they've been there and done that? And then you think for a moment, how many, how many stopped and thought, and you were like, wow, he's right. He's been married 47 years. I'm on one day. And he's learned a lot, and I ain't hardly learned nothing yet. It's gradual. You don't just give up and say we're not going to profess our faith anymore because, because we don't know how to do it or we mess up or something like that. He said to hold to your profession. Why? Because when we do make a mistake, we can come boldly before the throne of grace when we need help in the time of need. And we're complete. We're fully furnished by the Lord. Everything that we need gradually as we grow into it. Right? So when you walk in your own identity, stop trying to be something around you. Stop trying to make some type of precedent. I, I, and I know that you, 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 you try to form a little bit and try to be here and there, and, and that's okay. But, but, but don't get so lost in, well, I got to be like Sister Cece over here, or I got to be like Joe, or I got to be like uh, anybody else. The Lord has made you to be who he has created you to be. And we all say together, I am who the Lord says I am. Miss Mina, you will, you will be used in a ministry and in a way that no other human being has been used on the face of the planet. That's how big this thing is, okay? It's not just, well, we walk in the apostles' doctrine and we keep the same things that they keep and we do the same things. But, but, but the Lord used Peter in a way and the Lord used John in a way and I know y'all been watching that little show where everybody's specific they got their own identity oh this person likes this and this person likes that and this person don't do this and Matthew he, he's, a, he's a fraud because they don't like it because he collects taxes and all that kind of stuff I, I don't watch it so I don't know but, but, but they had all their own identity and, 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 and even in there I'm sure they're going to do an episode where they start comparing one another like the scriptures talks about okay but the Lord created them to be, and before they even knew that they would be used as the 12 disciples and, and continuing to the 12 apostles. They didn't know that. But the Lord, he foreknew that. 
So as you stand with me tonight, I, you, you, we've got to go walk forth in our own identity and, and stop trying to, to fashion it somehow around somebody else, okay? But I'm going to tell you, it, it's not going to work if we don't make it relational. You're going to crash and you're going to burn if it doesn't have any type of relationship to it. Because the only way it can be dispensed to your own knowledge and understanding is by relationship. Okay? So I know I kind of ended maybe on a high note, maybe a low note, I don't know. But uh, just, just be who God called you to be. And you may say, what does that mean? Start praying. Start getting a relationship. The Lord will tell you what it means. I'm not, that's what I told you. I wish I could tell you, but I can't tell you what that means to walk in your own identity, to walk in your own calling. I don't know what that means. But if you'll get in relationship, if you'll walk with God, if you'll start praying a little bit more, if you'll start getting a little bit more focused in your prayers, sometimes we can waste a lot of time praying because we're not focused. Fo that's why we call it focused prayer. You can waste a lot of time because you're not in focused prayer. But if you'll focus yourself, set the phone down somewhere over there. And in fact, when I do it, I put the phone in a different room because if I hear that thing vibrate, it's bothering me. Who is that on my phone? And my whole prayer, Brother Dexter, is messed up because my phone vibrated. And if that's your crutch or whatever, put it in another room. Pray for five minutes away from the phone or something. Use your Bible instead of your phone. I don't, I don't know. But, but that's the focus type you've got to go forth with. You've got to start identifying these things that maybe trip you up, maybe, maybe, maybe fall. Yes, we can go before the throne of grace, uh, but, but if it's just repetitive, we ought to be able to see, well, I've got to take care of this because this is, this is keeping me from what I'm supposed to be doing, okay? So I'm not going to talk no more. Uh, thank you for listening. I pray that you got something from it. I pray you wrote the scriptures down or you did something. Uh, and go back and read them and really mull over this because this is our identity. It's whoever God says you are. And whatever God says you're going to do, that's, that's what you're going to do if you'll let him do it. Right? So, Pastor Freeze, I want you to come and close us, and then we'll go and, and uh, thank you. Uh, you almost let me forget. Our Bass Pro Parade Festival, not Bass Pro, Stripe Bass, <laughs> whatever the thing is, is next Saturday. Okay? One I'm going to need everybody that can, if you could just come. If you can't stay the whole day, that's totally understandable, but just don't, don't not show up if, you, if you're able and willing to, okay? We just need to just show up. We need to have a good crowd. We're going to be handing some stuff out. Uh, we got our cards now. How many like the cards? You like the cards? I mean, be honest with me. We, we'll try to make a couple more designs, maybe make the letters bigger. I don't know. We'll try to work some different stuff, okay? But I think they're fair. I think they're fair that we can get by with it. We were just trying to get them fast. I, I called on uh, Dexter, uh, not Dexter, Garrett, and I said, make us a design and make it quick, and he did, and it, it looks very good. I love it. Uh, so with that said, uh, don't forget we're, we need waters to pass out, okay? So if you could just grab a case of water here and there, bring it up. But uh, we've been announcing it kind of sporadically for the past month. Yeah, it's not this Saturday. It's next Saturday, okay? It's, it's going to be in town. We've got a booth, a table. So we will need some help. Uh, let, me, let me say this, and I, I'm not trying to keep you long. If you're not able to come for the whole day, but you want to come for a short time, maybe ask who is going to be there at what time because last year uh, we needed some folks to come at the end of the day to help us pack up because it was me, Haley, you were there, and Aslan and Jeff and, 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 and Bobby Scott. But then some of those had to leave, and we still weren't finished. So I think as of the last second, it was me and Haley and, and Asher. <laughs> so trying to tote tables and trying to get out of there, and it's hot. And so if you're not able to come for the whole day, but you want to come and, and you're not able to stay for all day, figure out who's going where because we don't want everybody to come at the end of the day. Okay? I think it was 1.30 when we were wrapped up okay so uh we got some different things we're going to do so so be there or be square need you to be there and there was one other announcement and i forgot it what was it for that's next saturday that's yeah no nothing yep 
note. As far as I know, uh, that we're not going to do the water bottle labels like we did last year. We're going to try something a little bit different. We tried it. Nothing wrong with it. We'll, we'll just try different options because a lot of them would drink the water and <clears throat> in the trash. Okay? Yeah. 